Hello and welcome to uh, Crank Your Damn Just to 11. Today we're gonna have a special episode that's going to be about Sammy's cats. Yay! Um, I'm I'm going to tell you that I've been around cats uh, pretty much all my life. Um, from the time I was a baby, actually, my parents had a cat that apparently was biting people's ankles, so they got rid of that cat. Um, even when I was a student, often I had cats around. Either it was my cat or my um, roommate's cat. Um, but they were not Siamese cats most of the time. Uh, I was introduced to the Siamese breed and the associated breeds uh, by my wife. When I met her, she already had uh, an oriental short hair, which is a breed associated to the Siamese cats. Um, and then we went on from, from there. Uh, first of all, I should mention, if you watch this video and you're fall in love with Siamese cats, uh, do your research about the temperament of the cat and, uh, uh, how they are. They tend to be vocal. Uh, we have one cat who is not very vocal. It's Meadow. That's our current, uh, Siamese. And uh, for the st at the start of her life, for maybe two years, she didn't meow very much. Uh, and then she started finding her voice, and now she meows. Um, but usually they're very vocal. So I invite you to watch uh, YouTube videos of Siamese cats and listen to, to them. And you may even search for Siamese cats uh, calling mother or whatever you want to put the you know, any keywords that will evoke the ca the Siamese cats while it's meowing, because some of them can be very annoying, <laughs> unfortunately. We didn't have that uh, experience, but I guess some people do. Um, they're, the Siamese cats in general are very intelligent. Uh, they're more intelligent than the other breeds that I've had. Um, and I'm going to explain why they're more intelligent. Um, you have two general types of Siamese cats. You have the, the apple head shape, like shaped like a normal tabby or uh, a cat of no pedigree. <laughs> and then you have the wedge shaped uh, Siamese cats. Uh, the, the apple shaped cat is uh, kind of original. It's the original Siamese cat. And then the wedge was developed later. And that's the shape of head that my wife prefers. Um, so as far as uh, uh, the cats go, uh, I mean, we've had a, a whole bunch of cats, but I'm going to talk about our Siamese, and then at the end, at the end I'm going to talk a little bit about the other cats. Um, Siamese or associated breeds. So the first cat that we had was Green Ice, which was a, a, a white cat. And his name was a play on uh, green, green Eyes, but we were calling him Green Ice, or just Ice. Um, he was a white oriental short hair with green eyes. Um, he was an absolute sweetie. That, that, that cat was, was great with us uh, and with the kids and with everyone. Uh, he was very vocal. Um, <laughs> If he was not happy, or if he was even happy, he would let you know that uh, what his feelings were. Um, eventually, uh, my wife already had it when I met her, so I I, I came into his life. Uh, he was already an adult cat, and eventually he became uh, blind uh, as he grew older, and he had more impairments for walking around. So. We made stairs for him so that he could get on our bed. Uh, unfortunately, there's one time that I did something that spooked him. And because he was blind at that point, it, it was hard for him. He could still navigate the house without much problem. But if he was spooked, then it was just he had to run away fast. And there's one time where I spooked him by doing something. And instead, he went, he went to jump on the stairs and he wanted to jump on the stairs going upstairs to get a head start to run upstairs but he misaligned himself and he got the jump on the stairs going downstairs so he did a a, a bigger jump from 
from the landing to the, the stairs downstairs instead of fall and you know falling on the stairs upstairs that was uh unfortunately for him that was i i thought that was funny uh but he was okay you know he didn't hurt himself or anything it was just <laughs> surprising i guess for him uh at the end of his life for the last about the last year of his life we gave him subcutaneous fluids um he had hydration problems uh and then eventually you know we were giving him baths also and all kinds of enemas uh because he had problem with his bowel and eventually it was it just became too much and so you can tell when a cat is is pretty much done um he let us know that he was done and we euthanized him um but we still have a picture my wife commissioned a, a painting of him that we have in our uh, living room and um he's the only cat that benefits from that he was he was super sweet i don't have pictures of him uh because it was before Google Photos, um, and uh, the pictures would not be great quality anyway. And I know I have movies of him, but they're, they're not great movies either. Um, so, yeah, we had Ice. Um, then, so Ice was a wedge head cat. It had the, the triangle shaped head. Uh, like most oriental short hairs do I don't think there's a breed maybe now there is I, I I don't know what happens but at that time I don't think there was a breed of oriental short hair that didn't have a wedge head uh, then we got Willow uh, who was a lynx point Siamese cat with an, an apple head and she was really a daddy's girl um, she kept getting uh, on my lap and she kept grooming me. She groomed even my head. I had uh, hair about this length. Um, and uh, she would come behind me and start licking my head. I guess her hair was also short. So I guess it reminded her of her hair. And she would uh, do that. And uh, But that cat had no claw control. And uh, I loved her tremendously. But every time she was like putting a paw on us. And... Uh, you know, oh, I love you, daddy. The claws were always kind of a little bit out. She was not like scratching us real badly, but the claws were a little bit out. So uh, I tolerated it. Other people might not tolerate that from a cat. I I will tolerate a lot from my cats. Um, she was very vocal also. Uh, not as vocal as Ice, I would say, but she was, uh, she always meowed from, from the get-go, from the time we got her until uh, her passing away, she was, she was vocal. Uh, she died of feline leukemia, uh, and that, that was hard on us, uh, especially on me, because she was such a daddy's girl. I, I, that cat would get on my chest at night when I was going to bed. She would get on my chest, and then we, she would sit in the middle of my chest, and then I would pet her on both sides, and she would. it was bliss for her. I, she loved us. She loved me. Um, so, yeah, she had leukemia, which is a, a cancer. The procedure to try to fix it would have been very expensive and very risky also there was not a great chance that it would work and also i have seriously i have my doubts now i mean at the time i already had doubts but now i have even more doubts now that i've un undergone chemo you know you get a cat and you give chemo to the cat cats are not very cooperative i'm so i'm sorry i love cats but the if you want to to herd a cat, well, there's a, the expression herding cats, to mean a difficult task. But if you want to herd a cat, if you have a tornado coming and you want to herd a cat, good luck. Um, I, I know some people are able to train their cats to to come at any command, uh, though I wonder how they would, the cats would react if there was a tornado coming. Uh, but cats are not very cooperative, so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, whether Willow would have tolerated uh, the chemo at all. Um, 
So she 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 died of feline uh, leukemia a few years back, and then we had a time, period of time when we didn't have uh, any Siamese cats in the house. Zeno was here; it's another cat. Uh, so he was here when Meadow, uh, Willow was alive, and he's still with us. Uh, so we had just one cat for that time. Then we got Meadow. Who's also a Lynx Point Siamese cat with an apple head. And the papers, when we got her, the papers were saying that she was a feral cat. And <laughs> I, I'm I'm wondering, and we never got the full story of you know what how they got her at the rescue where where we picked her up from. Uh, she was Mark Feral on the paperwork. I'm assuming that somebody abandoned her, and I'm completely appalled at, at you know how could someone abandon such a sweet cat? Um, we got her when she was six months old, and uh, we were told by the lady, the foster lady, that she might not ever be a lab cat, and she had reasons to say that because when we went there to pick. To pick her up, we went there to see her and then pick her up and bring her back uh, with us to our home. And when we went there, all the Siamese cats that were at that uh, foster house were coming towards us and coming to see us, and they wanted to be adopted. But Meadow was very reluctant. She was not coming towards us. She was in her cage. She stayed in her cage. We approached her very slowly and, you know, petted her a little bit, but she was cowering away. And and then the lady said, you know, she might never be a lap cat uh, because she was also feral. And But she's a lap cat now. She's fine. She's totally fine. fine as fine as the other cats I've had. Um, it took more time for her to get used to us and get on our lap, and even my lap. She got on my wife's lap faster than she did on my lap, but now she's more on my lap than on my wife's lap, so I don't know, maybe I have to touch with female Siamese cats. Uh, and she's also a daddy's girl like Willow was, uh, but less than Willow. She does groom me, she does lick my head a little bit, but Willow would do, Willow would do it all the time. Meadow does it once in a while. Um, so it's rarer that she does it and it's also a shorter span of time. She's going to give me a few, like maybe 30 seconds of licks on the fingers and then she's going to stop. Willow would go on my hand or my, she would do my hand, my arm, and she would go on for 10 minutes if I just let her. Um, sometimes I wonder if the guests think I'd need a, to take a shower or something. Uh... And I've also noticed that among our cats, the, the you know the the closer to the present we are, the more bright I think our cats are. And I don't know if it's just me making up stories, but I don't think so. I think our cats are brighter because Meadow is the only cat I've been able to play fetch with her. I would I would throw the toy and she would go get it and bring it back and I would throw it again and she would go get it and bring it back. She doesn't do it anymore. Maybe because I haven't really done everything that needed to be done to train that behavior into her. Uh, right now, if she brings a toy and I throw it, then she looks at me and she's like, why are you... It, it, it seems like she wants me to play with the toy. Why are you not playing with the toy? I'm br I brought you a toy. You should play with it. And I, instead, I just throw it away. <laughs> and she looks at me like a uh, puzzled. Um, she also makes nests. And it's the only cat we had that makes nests. She makes nests with toilet paper or um, tissues. Uh, so now the toilets are all closed off to her. She cannot get into any toilet. Because otherwise, we would be gone. And then we would come back and the toilet paper would all be on the floor. Uh, and shredded. Uh, but she does it sometimes with the tissues. The tissues, we have some tissues in the living room. And, and once in a while, she's going to get into the tissue box and pull all the tissues out and make a nest in front of the box. Uh, I don't know if she thinks she's that it's a gift from her to us. You know, she's an indoor cat. She cannot go outside. 
So maybe she can, um, maybe it's our way, you know, otherwise she would give us dead birds or dead mm, animals. Uh, but instead she makes nests for us. <laughs> uh, and she watches TV with us sometimes. Um, I would have to say that a lot of the TV she watches is like birds or squeaky animals on, on TV. Sometimes I watch other videos on YouTube and they they make this, this little squeaky noise and she, she perks up and she's interested. And it's the only cat we had that does that. And sometimes she watches even Formula One with me. And it's the only cat that does that either. I we never had another cat. We had Willow before Meadow, and Willow didn't do that. She didn't. She didn't care about the TV. And Zeno that we have right now with Meadow, he doesn't care about the TV. I we turn the TV on. It can be anything on there. It, for him, the TV doesn't exist, unless it's gonna. You know, if it's gonna make a huge no, noise and suddenly, then he's gonna pay attention. But otherwise, it doesn't. It doesn't care at all. Uh, Meadow, if she sees birds on the TV or little animals squeaking or even the F1, uh, she she's paying attention. Uh, oh, and I, I keep forgetting that people don't know what F1 means. F1 is Formula One racing. So she watches races sometimes with me. Not the whole race, but maybe 10 minutes of, of watching, but she watches part of the race. She's interested. Uh, I've never seen a cat interested in, in TV like that. Um, and so, you know, this is about the Siamese, but over the years we've had other cats besides our Siamese. We had, uh, when I met my wife, she had another cat named Jonas, but Jonas left her very quickly. He was living with her when she was with her previous husband. And... Uh, then she moved, and, and Jonas, as soon as he could, he just decided to leave and find another family. Uh, it was a very, it was a nice cat. He was Ice's buddy, and he was he would sleep with Ice, and um, but he, he just left. And then we had uh, Mehadabel together with Ice and Jonas, and she Mehadabel stayed with us until the end. Um, but she was not a cat that was very warm towards people. Uh, I call her the cold cat. Um, you know, she would, it once in a while she would come over and she would get pet, but it was not like ice. Ice would come over and, you know, he was cuddling with us. Hannibal was keeping her distances until the end. Um... And as far as other cats go, we have Zeno, and I mentioned him before. Zeno has been with us at the same time Willow was, and at the same time Meadow is. Um, that was Zeno was my mother's cat, um, and we think that in his lineage. I'm going to show pictures in a moment, but I think in his lineage, uh, he has uh, either Maine Coon or Norwegian Forest cat in his lineage because it's a big, big ball of fur. Um, and he traveled from Montreal with us because my mother had it, had him, and she lived in Montreal. That's where I'm from originally. And then one time she called and she said, "Well, I have this cat and uh, he's driving me crazy. Uh, can you take it?" And then we had to scramble my wife and I to figure out how to transport a cat from Montreal to Maryland. Um, the logistics of doing it, passing the border. Uh, the litter box for the cat during transit. It turns out that it didn't do anything while we were transiting. Uh, cats can go for a long time without doing anything in the litter box. Um, so I had to research it in a, in a hurry to make sure we had uh, everything needed for him. And um, I think if we had left him there, uh, he would probably have been euthanized because my mother was the depressive and when she when everything was going well she would get cats and when everything was falling apart and that was a period where everything was falling apart uh, the cat might have um, disappeared very quickly uh, if we hadn't taken them in um, now let's go to the pictures so yeah this is Zeno um, as I said is a big cat 
and uh, it probably has Maine Coon or, or uh, Norwegian Forest Cat in his ancestry. Uh, I had a few pictures of him with uh, Willow. This is Willow, uh, and she's a Lynx Point Siamese. And sometimes the Lynx Point Siamese are confused for other breeds, but uh, the the way the coat works and the way that the temperament also. Uh, we're sure we're sure that she's a Siamese because she has a Siamese uh, the the Siamese behavior. And there's a picture of Zeno uh, all extended. And this is one where it was just uh, sleeping and falling, I guess. And this is uh, Willow again. Unfortunately, I wish the picture were better, but uh, that's as good as it gets. Uh, this one is better, but we don't see her face. And that's uh, Willow again licking my hand. So I said that she would groom me often. It was one of the times she was grooming me. And this is actually, this is out of order chronologically. This is a, a an adoption picture that was put up on the web. When Willow died, one of the things I did was to go back to where we got her. We got her at the Sammy's Rescue League in Virginia. And right now they've, they've shut down operations mostly. But I went back to where we got her and uh, I downloaded all the adoption pictures that they had put up. And this was one of them. Um... Uh, so now and now we're moving to to Meadow and he, and you know the two cats especially Meadow as an adult and Willow, uh, it's very hard to tell them apart. Um, and I have to say that if I didn't have the dates on those pictures, I would probably not be able to tell one from the other. Um, so this is a picture of Meadow as a baby uh, that was at the. The the adoption, uh, no, not the adoption, the, the foster family where she was. Um, and that's what they had put up online for people to adopt her. And she, she was super cute and super white, but we knew that her her coat would change. And already, this is, um, this is a video, actually. This is uh, when she, the first night she was here at home. Um... She was very, very shy. She spent a lot of time under the bed and eventually she came out and uh, she accepted uh, my caresses. Uh, but you can already see that there, her fur is different uh, from previously. So if I go back here, this is you know, she's all, almost all white. And here she has more uh, stripes on the head uh, and this is her watching uh, Formula One with me in the basement. Um, and uh, her grooming me. Uh, and uh, here she's playing with her banana. That's uh, the yellow thing is a, a toy banana for cats. And uh, she's giving it to uh, her her best shot and there's the then there's a meadow and Zeno together and uh, this is another want to bite the deer want to bite the deer yeah I don't know how much uh, you can hear from uh, from this but she's I, I ask her, do you want to bite the deer? And, and she's responding with uh, little chirps. Um, want to bite the deer. And I should say that those chirps, she also does that when when I uh, kind of... Uh, when I tell her not to do something and I scold her, she's going to talk back to me sometimes. She turns her head, she looks at me and she goes... Meh, 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 meh. Um, that's, that's another thing that she does and that other cats that we had don't do. Um, and that's why I think that the, the Siamese is more intelligent than the other cats. It's all those small behaviors that only they do. 
uh, that makes me think that. And then there's a nest that she made for us. Uh, I took the picture mainly for my wife, but uh, to tell her what Meadow did. But uh, it's useful also to show people what uh, Siamese cats can do. And this was taken uh, yesterday or maybe today this morning. I don't remember when I took it. Uh, So yeah, this is a um, meadow um, enjoying the vent. Uh, Siamese cats and Willow was doing the same thing actually. Uh, they would go, they would go on the vent next to the fridge, and just lie on it uh, because it's warm air, uh, warm air, and um, yeah. So that's it for the slideshow. So, yeah, I, I'm as far as I'm concerned, uh, Siamese cats is two thumbs up, three thumbs up, four thumbs up. If I had more thumbs, uh, I think they're they're great cats. I was reading an article earlier today in the Ars Technica, which I think had first been published in the Wired, and uh, they were talking about accelerated uh, evolution, and, and there's evidence among the, the biologists that some species at least are evolving faster than Darwin was positing. So they're, they're evolving in the span of a human lifetime, basically. And I, I, I am speculating, but I'm wondering whether cats, or Siamese cats especially, are, are doing that. Because I've seen behaviors in, in Siamese cats that I've never seen another cat, and I, I've seen be, I see behaviors now in Meadow that I've never seen into any previous cats that we've we've had, uh, like talking back when I scold her. I've never had a cat talk back to me, <laughs> but I scold her and she's like, mur, 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 mur. I've never seen that. And I suppose w when we pick. The cats that we want and the cats that are going to reproduce and 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 get in uh, a foster home or uh, wherever they at the breeder i guess they're called breeders uh so at the breeder when they pick the cats that are going to reproduce i, I suppose they pick the, the cats that are nicer to humans and respond more to humans and then that would favor the cats that talk back to us i guess because you know, she's not she's not yowling, she's not screaming at me, she's just mur, 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 mur. it's like oh, okay, I heard you. Uh so it's not bad that she's talking back. And all those interactions I have with her where I throw the toy and she brings it back, or I throw the toy and she looks like why are you not playing with the toy? Those are all behaviors I've not seen in cats previously. Um so yeah, I'm wondering whether cats are evolving faster than we give them credit for. Uh, but yeah, two, two thumbs up for Siamese cats as far as I'm concerned. And as far as my wife is concerned, she's not here, but I'm sure she would uh, agree with me because we keep going back to the Siamese. Uh, so uh, you can... You can put comments if you if you want and ask me questions about the Siamese cat. I, I will re reply the the best way I can. I am not a Siamese specialist by any means, um, and I invite you to go online and find uh, other sources of information about the Siamese uh, if you're interested in, in getting a Siamese cat. But for now, uh, I'll say goodbye and see you in next episode.